And just one last example. This story reported around the world. Global warming kills 14% of world's corals in a decade. Quoting a study by, sadly, the taxpayer-funded Global Coral Reef Monitoring Network. It sounds scary. But again, I'm already thinking this study picks 2009 as the start year for measuring this decline. Does that just happen to be because coral cover in that year peaked? And thus, if you take that as your first year, it's going to exaggerate any decline afterwards. And by the way, it wasn't just global warming that led to the supposed decline. This study said reefs had also been dynamited and polluted. I talked earlier to a whistleblower, Professor Peter Ridd, a marine physicist who was sacked by James Cook University after pointing out exaggerations by global warming academics there. The High Court is now considering his appeal. I started by asking Peter Ridd if this claim of a 14% decline in coral cover in a decade was actually true. I doubt it very much. It's it's very interesting when you read this report that, you know, the graph goes up and down and they've picked the period when it was at the highest, 2008-9, and they've picked the period when it was lowest, 2018, and they show it going down. And it has, but it's also come up since then. So why did they choose 2018 rather than 2020? And also, why didn't they mention the fact that the Great Barrier Reef at the moment has record high coral cover? A lot of the scientists involved with this work on the Great Barrier Reef but it's remarkable that nothing is mentioned about the Great Barrier Reef because we have record high coral cover and that's not the story that they want to talk about. Now, I want to illustrate that point that you've referred to here, that the reef coverage goes up and then it goes down and then it goes up again because it recovers. I want to do that by first mentioning another claim in this report, that one single event in 1998 of coral bleaching, warmer seas, caused 8% of all world corals to die. Is that correct? It, it quite likely is, but they would have recovered. I mean, if you look at the, uh, the Great Barrier Reef was supposedly fairly badly hit by the 98 bleaching event, but most of the coral actually uh, recovered. Um, in fact, on the, the total Great Barrier Reef statistics, you can barely even see it on a blip. And, you know, a, a statistic that I often quote is that the southern third of the Great Barrier Reef uh, since 2011 has now got three times more coral on it uh, than it did then, right? So it goes down and it goes up. So you can have a factor of, you know, three change in the amount of coral. So an 8% loss Absolutely. is just nothing. It can, regrow, it can regrow that in a year or two and certainly in less than five years, no problems. But that is exactly why they didn't add the 8% coral loss in 1998 to the 14% that they detected between 2009 and 18 to get a much bigger figure, which would have been great headlines, because in the meantime it recovered like it's recovered since 2018. That's the fundamental uh, dishonesty of this. Yes, you're, you're absolutely right. And there, there is a degree, I, I don't know whether I'd say it's dishonesty, but it's certainly... Um, it, it, you just have to wonder what their, their goals are here, given that they omit any good news, they fail to tell you that things are fluctuating. Um, you've just fundamentally can't trust what these people are producing. And it, it keeps on coming again and again and again. And we've got to a stage where we just can't trust our science institutions. But nor can we trust the media, Peter. I mean, they're feeding a sort of porn industry of global warming horror headlines. For example... Uh, the news last year went around the world. You saw it bob up in the New York Times, you know, and the BBC in Britain. Great Barrier Reef has lost half its corals. Is that true? Yeah. Uh, it, it is, but it all grew back again. You know, it goes up and down. So they'll pull out the number. And even now, even now we're at record high coral cover, and this is where you're right, that the media... Um, isn't telling the story. They know because, you know, I've been putting out um, that we're at record high coral cover. The uh, Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority doesn't want to talk about it, but the data is there and the, the media could report on it if they like. But even now they're saying well, we've, we've lost half the coral since, um, I think, 2010, right? So they, they did a fact check on some of my comments and they said the corals actually declined since 2010. But when you actually look at the data, the, the northern region has got about the same amount of coral. 
the central region has doubled the amount of coral and the southern region has got triple the amount of coral. So there's a fundamental dishonesty about the way the media report it, but there's a huge problem with what they're reporting in the first place, that you have these organisations who are not doing science. They're actually doing advocacy is what's happening. Well, that's exactly correct. And the, 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 the uh, repair of the reef... Uh, that was noted in this uh, report that you just mentioned early this year, did not get yeah. that uh, coverage. In fact, you know, the, where most of the tourists go, the central part of the reef, the coral there has been the best since I don't know how long when you just look at the graphics that this the Marine Park Authority itself has put out. I just think the whole thing, honestly, I keep referring to it as a porn industry. It is. Peter Ridd, Thank you so much for trying to keep uh, people to the straight and narrow here. It's been unrewarding work for you, but it's much appreciated. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.